切切切切切切切切，耶！哎呦，哎呦，哎呦，哎呦 ！Yo, what up, man? Jackson one six one six, creator and host of One Mic Stand, one third of Sex and Strange. Just shout out to seeing Juice. What up? What up? Fuck is popping. What's good? What's going on? Um, it's Monday again. It's Monday. It's Monday. But really, when y'all see this, it's really gonna be Thursday. So I'm back on the sofa. Um, and the episode that I did last week, uh, I kind of, I, I kind of talked about, I kind of talked about how I'm gonna try something out where I'm not gonna have, I'm not gonna have any opinions on women, um, going forward. I'm going to try that out because that's not, you know, what I talk about sometimes I feel like maybe it's, maybe it's not working. Maybe it's not hitting, um, you know, and I, that's fine. I, I accept that if that is the case, you know what I mean? And I'm always open to trying something new. So I've really honestly been, you know, sitting down, thinking, thinking about jotting down, typing down, writing down my ideas of different types of like man conversations. Uh, that I could have, you know, and I felt like I got, I got, I feel like I have a, a really good, you know, several topics that I want to tackle. Um, but I feel like I, I should start with myself. I feel like I should start with myself. I feel like I should start with retrospection. I feel like I should always start with, with some vulnerability um, and just being real. And I think what sets my show apart from anyone else's show, man or woman, is my ability to really, truly, like, accept my insecurities, but to talk about them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I accept the things that I don't necessarily love about myself, but I feel like some of the, I feel like I can relate to a lot of other people. It's just that other people may be afraid to kind of like talk about these things. So I said, fuck it, man. I'm going to start with myself. You feel me? I'm going to start with myself. I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to start the man shit and tell y'all how I feel because I'm a man. So I'm not going to bounce these conversations off of anybody else. I'm going to bounce them shits right off of the mirror. Um, and the first thing that I could think of, like I said, was not necessarily things that that men feel insecure about, things that I personally, Jackson, uh, feels insecure about. Um, and I figured just like right away, man, we should just we should just right away jump jump to some real shit. You see the title. You read the title, you see the title. Some of you laughed, some of you called it gay. Some of you said, get the fuck out of here. Some of you said, oh shit, that sucks for you. Whatever, whatever, man. But I do wish I do wish my dick was bigger. I do. And that's not to say that it's that's not to say that it's not good enough. It's not to say that's not to say that it's inadequate. But I think like as a as a guy. I think as as a guy, as a as a man, even sometimes as a boy, there's something. I don't know if it's societal pressure. I don't know if it's this whole like patriarchal thing that everybody likes to refer to, but it's something that males tend to attach their machismo, their pride, their manhood in general their boyhood, their manhood, whatever, just with this with this one body part. You know what I mean? And I don't know if that's I don't know if that's right. I don't know if that's wrong, but I just feel like that's reality. Um and I think that that's really fucked up. And I think that is I think that is unfair. Let me let me name some other things, man. Before before I really start I do wish my dick was bigger. I do wish I was taller. I do wish I was slimmer. I wish I was more handsome. I wish I had abs. I wish I had better connections. I wish I had 
I wish I had a uh, better sex. I wish I was a better athlete than what I was. And I was pretty good. And I don't know if it's a strength or a weakness that I'm so aware of my weaknesses. Like, you know what I mean? Like in a weird way, in a weird, odd way, recognizing your weaknesses is kind of a superpower. You know what I'm saying? But it's almost like if you recognize your weaknesses and you focus on your weaknesses too much, like it could be your downfall as well. And as a man, as a as a black man, just kind of, you know, maneuvering through life, it's a lot of things as as black men that we are expected to be. Um, our stereotypes, some are, some are super negative, but then some are super unattainable. Um, and that's, that's a, that's a tough, that's tough. And when I say unattainable, it's like, we all know our negative stereotypes, from within the culture, from, out, you know, even the ones that come from outside of the culture. But let's think about, like, the, let's think about, like, the positive stereotypes that you could be looked at negatively if you don't fit all of these positive attributes, right? Where it's like all black men are strong. All black men are attractive. All black men are handsome. All black men have God-given amazing bodies. All black men are uh, are fucking porn stars. All black men is going to fuck the shit out you. All black men got BBCs. All black men got big dicks. All black men got swag. All black men got style. All black men can dance. All black men got great music taste. All black men are cool. All black men are athletic. I don't know if I mentioned that. All black men could jump. All black men are fast. Like, all black men are creative. All super, super, super positive, banging fucking attributes. But still at the same time, all stereotypes. All stereotypes. And it can kind of create, just even from being a young a young boy, young man, teenager, growing up into a man, like just how we hear negative stereotypes, we hear positive ones too. But what I think it does is like, it makes you start to feel like if you don't live up, to those stereotypes, the positives, one, the positive ones, then you're less, not only less of a man, but less of a black man. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm a black man who don't have a a a, a great body given given to me by God, if I'm not super athletic, excuse me, if I don't play, if I'm if I don't play basketball, if I'm not fast, if I can't jump out the gym. If I can't dance, if I don't have no rhythm for real, like now it's like, it's not like it it can't just be the fact that I have a lot of talents, but just some of my talents aren't in those specific categories. Now it's to the point where I'm not black. Oh, you not black for real. You can't dance. You not black for real. You not cool. You not black for real. You don't, oh, you don't like this particular artist. You don't like rap. You not black for real. You know, and and imagine just think about and imagine like how. Like we get that early. We get that early, man. Imagine that. Imagine how that maybe shapes and molds a young man's mind. Growing up, imagine how that shapes his choices. What he chooses to do after school, whether he likes it or not. What he like, what he chooses to do, like when everybody, when maybe all his friends is, you know, going out for the basketball team. 
or the football team. But he want to play baseball. He want to play soccer. He want to. He think lacrosse look dope. He want to skateboard, or he want to. He want to be a part of the science club or the chess club or the math or the math team or something like that. But it's so many pressures just even at a young age. It's like that's not cool. And not even and and like I said, because I'm really trying not to even involve the opinions or the thoughts of women. So we're not even talking about girls' opinions of who's who's cool and who's not. We're talking about other little other little niggas, other little boys in, in your class. It's how hard how hard would it be to make friends when you six and seven years old and all of the boys in the class play sports? And you the scientist, nigga. You the you the STEM nigga. You the smart you the smartest nigga in the class. You the skateboard kid. You the anime kid. You the you the artist kid. So now you kind of like because you're not really in the in crowd. That stays with you. Like a lot of us, I feel like we can uh we we can all agree that like. How we felt in our childhood, how we was brought up in our childhood, kind of shapes our adulthood for the rest of our adulthood. And some of us accept that. Some of us, you know, go back and reflect on it, think about it, talk about it, and try to maybe change some of the things where our childhood fucked us up at. But then imagine how many of us just be like, fuck that. Like, I'm cool. My childhood was great, even though it wasn't. My childhood was popping, even though it wasn't. My childhood wasn't traumatic, even though it was. You know what I'm saying? Um, And I use, like I said, again, man, back to the, <laughs> back to the dick shit, because that's what I titled it. And I feel like that's one of the most, as a grown black man, that's one of the things that, we don't we don't talk about. So like I said, I'm I'm gonna talk about myself. I'm not representing nobody else cuz I don't know how y'all niggas feel. But I can tell you how I feel and I can tell you that I'm not scared to tell y'all niggas how I feel. Um as everybody knows and it's, I've said it so many times, you know, I didn't I didn't start having sex until I was 20. And that really fucked me up. And it still it still low key fucks me up because because of the expectations because of the expectations that I don't know if they placed on me just because of age I don't know if they placed on me because I'm black I don't know if they placed on me just because I'm a man I don't know if they placed on me because of all of those things because I'm a grown black man. Or I'm a grown black man who looks how 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 I look. Or I'm a grown black man who looks how I look and who has played sports his whole life. Or because I'm a grown black man who looks how I look, who's also played sports all of his life, who also seems to have a pretty good rapport and uh, with a with a lot of women. You know what I'm saying? I have a a lot of women who support me. A lot of women who are who I call friends, who I call homies. Um and I have a I have a, a decent amount of women who I actually have, you know, had sexual encounters with as well. And all of them haven't been great. All of them haven't been great. All of them haven't been popping. And that's something that I I think the vulnerable part is that's actually something that I think about. That's actually something that I give a fuck about. That's actually something that I, I care about. That's something that I've been embarrassed about. You feel me? But I also realize like it's certain things that I can't I can't do anything about. So how do you how do you go on living life positively when your insecurities are things that you know you can't change? Like how do you how do you do that? And I think a lot of uh, that's what a lot of men live with. A lot of men are trying to figure out and maneuver through life, 
trying to trying to get through life as a as a good human being successful professionally personally socially romantically whatever knowing that you got to walk around with these insecurities that you cannot change because they because they're they're physical you know what i'm saying like niggas is not going to get taller bro <laughs> niggas is not going to get taller Niggas not going to get more athletic. Your personality is your personality. You are who you are. You know, your mental shit is your mental shit. You can go to therapy. I don't know, though. Some things I don't... Some things I feel like you you can't get rid of. You could just cope with. You know, and I feel like as, uh, as a black man, I feel like sometimes that's that's the space... That's the space that niggas live in. Of how do I how do I cope with the things that I'm insecure about and not let them conquer my whole existence? How do I do that? How do I do that? How do I live and cope with my insecurities and still remain confident? Even though that there are clearly things. In my life that I'm not confident about. That's why you call them insecurities. That's what the fuck they are. How do you do that? How do you do that in a in a world where, where confidence is key? How do you do that in a world where niggas can smell confidence on you or they can smell whether you don't have it? And then they and then people kind of like judge you f- for having it or not having it. But people also judge you for for being insecure. But everybody has insecurities though. So how are you how do you be how are you able to achieve confidence while having insecurities, while accepting your insecurities, but not being fake confident though? How the fuck do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. And you know what's even this is not this is not meant to be funny, but I feel like it's kind of a funny story that just correlates to the title of why do I've never had I've never had a woman I've never had a woman say your dick is small. But I've also never had a woman say your dick is huge. And because just as a black people, men and women, we're just so over sexualized that is an insult. Or it's not an insult, but you take it as one. You take it's almost it almost aligns with like I've spoken about this before where we've been taught we've been taught from generation to generation to generation that average is average ain't cutting it. You can't be average. You gotta be excellent. You gotta be exceptional. You gotta be top notch. You gotta be A1. You gotta be top tier. Like excellent for black people is the new is average like that's the that's the least that you can be and i feel like that has that trickles over into every facet of our life kind of sort of like in terms of how we how we look at things how we judge things how we compare ourselves how we how we put ourselves or measure ourselves up to success or being successful. So again, again, I go back, I go back to the statement that I've never had a woman say, yo, your dick is small, but I've also never had a woman say, yo, your dick is huge. Which means that your dick is average. But average to niggas is supposed to be excellence. 
If you get called being if you black and you get called average, that's almost as bad as you being black and you being called the snitch. Like that's how that's how much niggas don't want to be average. And I'm not even talking about dick. I'm talking about in life and everything. And I had a I had a conversation with um I had a conversation with the homie Jazz like last year. And we was kind of low-key talking about this. And I remember something that she said where she was like, well, you know, I mean, I, you know, I, I only had sex with black dudes. You know what I mean? So, like, all black dudes pretty much got, like, big dicks and shit like that. And I said, that right there is, like, that's the positive stereotype that can drive you crazy if you don't fit that stereotype. And I think I rebutted it with, that's almost along the same lines of, you meet an Asian person and you think all Asian people are fucking genius. And that's their standard. Genius is standard for Asian people, but then you meet an Asian person who's not a genius But they're intelligent, but they're not a genius. You're going to be looking at them like, the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why you not super smart? Why you not super intelligent? You just regular? Like, you wasting you wasting your Asian-ness right now. And that's kind of that's kind of how it feels. That's kind of how it feels to be black. Like damn, you not you not superhuman, you not amazing, you not excellent, you 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 just regular, you just you just and that translates way outside of the bedroom. You just got a regular job, you just drive a regular car, you just live in a regular apartment, you just you just fuck me regularly. You just got a regular dick size? You just got, you know what I'm saying? You just go out on regular dates? You just make regular content? You just run a regular 40-yard dash? Like, it trickles down into every facet, bro. Like, niggas really feel like you got to be fucking superheroes just to have a shot. And I'm not even talking about in no fucking corporate shit. I'm not even ta- I'm talking about within the culture. You got to be excellent to be deemed successful in the cult in the own in our own fucking community. You can't even just be a regular person on the right path trying to do the right shit, living right. That's not good enough. It's not seen as good enough, man. And just to go back to me personally, I have, you know, I have insecurities. I have insecurities with, with my looks. I have insecurities with my, with my height, with my weight, with my hair, with my, with the, the size of my ears. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have insecurity even, even with my teeth. Like I, my mom got perfect teeth. Mine ain't as lit as hers. I got a little gap in my shit. My mom's teeth are super, like, super closed. You can't see no spaces in between her joint. You know? I look at my, I look at my stomach on a daily basis and be like, fuck. Like, why, why are you, why, why are you here? (laughs) On a daily, on a daily basis, man. On a daily basis, I when I come out the shower and walk walk in front of the mirror, I'm just like, damn, yo, I got I gotta run, I gotta run some more, I gotta run some more. I've I've been having to run some more for 36 years, and you know I gotta accept like my body is my body, my body's my body, I you know, and it's it's really not gonna change. Not drastically. I 
I've been, <laughs> I've been, I've been in the middle of having sex with chicks, and really, no bullshit would be thinking like, damn, if my dick was bigger, like she'd probably be making more noise. Damn, if my dick was bigger, she probably would have. She probably would have came already. I really be thinking that shit. I've thought those things. I've had a situation. This is hilarious. I've had a situation where I went. To go have sex with a girl. As an away game. At their crib. At her crib. Right. It was time. It was sex time. It was time to have sex. I didn't have no. I didn't have no condoms on me. <laughs> I'm I'm patting my pockets. Like I'm looking for a lighter or something. I ain't had no condoms on me. She points me in the direction of her condom drawer. No I'm lying. First time she pulls out, she pulls out a condom. So she goes into the drawer, pulls out a condom. She hands me, uh, it's a, it's like a, you know, just like a regular Trojan joint or whatever. I don't really think nothing of it. Rip it open, strap it on. You know what I'm saying? We get, we get to the, to the fucking part. Cool. Fast forward, however many, you know, weeks or months or whatever. Another away game. Go back to her crib. We about to smash again. At this point, I know where the the condom rack is or the condom drawer or, the, or whatever you want to call it. I know where it's at. So now I go to the I go to the uh to grab a condom even though I'm at her crib. It's magnums in there. It's magnums in the drawer. So now immediately my insecurities pop up. Immediately. My insecurities, my insecurities kick in. Cause now I'm thinking back to the time where it was her opportunity to choose the condom. And she had to do the mathematics and her head was like, all right, is this nigga a magnum dick condom or is he regular, degular, average, maybe mistake this nigga for a white person if he don't get a tan in so long, regular dick ass nigga condom. Yeah, he's that. He's that nigga. Let me grab him the regular shit. I'm thinking I'm thinking of all of this. While I'm about to fuck. Mind you, which is makes it even more hilarious. And you know, that's just it's just an insecurity. And again, I think it's I think the deeper issue of what I'm I guess trying to get at is the importance of knowing your insecurities, recognizing them, acknowledging them, but then trying to figure out a way to maneuver through life successfully while you still have all of these insecurities. You know what I mean? And I think what a lot of I think what a lot of guys do I think what a lot of I think what a lot of men do is when we when we have something that we're we're not super confident about or we have something that we're insecure about, um, we suppress it, we push it down, we never want to talk about it. Um, or the way that we do talk about it is making self deprecating jokes about it, which I definitely do a lot. I do that. Um you know, we 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 laugh it off. We laugh it off because really truly who who can we talk to about it? Who can we talk to about it where it's not weird? Who can we talk to about it where you're not judged? Who can you talk to about it where the person you're talking to cuz I know the rebuttal is going to be therapy, but who can you talk to about it where the person you're talking to actually gives a fuck about you 
to where they can say it's okay to where you can actually fucking believe them and and feel less insecure about it. You get what I'm saying? Cuz I'm I'm a I'm a fan of I'm a I'm I'm not anti-therapy. I'm a fan of people, you know what I'm saying, staying on their mental shit. But with some insecurities though, you uh, if you're insecure about something, telling somebody who don't really have a dog in a fight, I don't really think it's going to help you too much. It might help you with the vulnerability part because you're ju- because you're practicing getting it off of your chest, getting it off of your mind. You're practicing that part. You're practicing the vulnerability, but you're not really practicing attacking the insecurity of it. Because when I think about it, as I'm, like, as I'm speaking, as I'm talking, um, when you talking about trying to turn an insecurity to something that you're secure about, a lot of it has to do with acceptance, validation, but not from people that you don't know from people that you do know, from people that you do love, from people that you know love you, from people that you know care about you. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, those are the the people that you want to be accepted by. And I think that that's what... And that's why I tried to really, really simplify it down to to sex because that's just something that we can all understand, we can all relate to, um, we can all quantify that. You don't, you know, you just, you you always want to be accepted and wanted and liked and loved by the person that, that's in front of you that you're going to be the most intimate with. A person who, a person who is also giving themselves to you, like, that's the person that you want to feel most safe around. And I, I'm only speaking for me. But I'm assuming when I say that, I really don't think that I could be the only nigga who has those insecurities when it's time to, you know what I'm saying, lay down with somebody or when it's time to, when you actually, when you really like a woman or something like that and y'all get into it for the first time. Um, And, you know, maybe you, you just, I don't know. It's funny because like this is, it's even a, it's even a tough conversation to have just with myself. And I'm like the king of having tough conversations by myself. You know what I mean? But I, you know, I know how people is gonna take it. I know people is gonna it's gonna be super, you know, awkward or uncomfortable or whatever to even probably listen to this episode, watch this episode, whatever. Um, but I just think a lot of this shit is true, man. Um, and I think as men, I think as men, we gotta we have to figure out a way to muster up the courage um, to knock down our insecurities, to, I don't want to say embrace. I It's hard for me because I'm black. It's hard for me to say embrace average, but, like, we got to figure out a way to embrace the fact that, yo, like, we're not superheroes. We're not superhuman. We're not all excellent at every single thing. We're not all uh, exceptional at every single thing. We're not. We not, yo. And the pressure, and I I just go back to, like, I feel like the pressure is that not only are we expected to be exceptional in, in specific categories, but we're also groomed mentally by, by our families, by our loved ones, by our moms, by our fathers, that exceptional is the standard just because we niggas. Like just cause we just cause we black, nigga, the excellence is the fucking standard. We all get we all get that speech. We all get the, you gotta do twice as much to get, you know, half as half the opportunities and shit. We all get that speech. And it's not false. It's not false, but I don't know now looking back as a grown person, I don't know if that's contributing more to our success or more to our detriment within our own within our own community 
like I said, man, because you can no longer just be, you can no longer just be cool at anything. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you can't just you can't just be all right. Like, you can't just be good. Like, yeah, he good. Solid. Like, that's unacceptable within our community, man. And I think that that might be to our detriment. Oh, what have you. But, I don't know. I was just like the man convo that I wanted to kick it off with. You know what I'm saying? So, I figured I'd start off super, super vulnerable. Um... So I can kind of set the set the tone, set the standard of some of the things that I'm going to be talking about moving forward. And uh, I'm interested, I'm interested to see the feedback or, or hear the feedback, I should say. I'm interested to hear the feedback um, that I get on this particular this particular topic or this particular episode. Um, because I always want to open it, I always want to open a space for more men. To just even just be in a space where they where they can just see another man being expressive. So where they can just see another man like being vulnerable, see another man being honest, see another man telling the truth, telling how he feel, even if even if it's at his own expense. You know what I'm saying? Even if even if it's scary, even if it's like, oh, shit, I would never say that on record. I would never say that. In front of people. I would never say that in front of women. It's like, nah, bro. Like, you could do all of those things, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Because this is the safest space over here. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like the more the more men we can get to talk, to express themselves, to, to feel, to not even have specific feelings, nigga. Just start, just start at feel. The more niggas, the more men that we can just get to just feel, you know, I I feel like we'll uh, be moving in the right direction. You know what I mean? But I gotta, I feel like I gotta lead by example. So I'm kicking it off. I'm sharing some of my insecurities, some of the things that I'm that I don't think that I'm the greatest at. Some of the, some of the things that I'm not the greatest at. And the, and the fact that I got to accept that those things will never fucking be different. Those things will never be the same. Some cards you can't reach. You can't reshuffle the deck. This is what you got to work with. This is what you got. Go out there and be successful, my nigga. Go out there and make this make fucking magic happen. You know what I mean? And I, I do feel like a, literally all of us are running around trying to organize the hand that we've been dealt so that we can be, you know, reach the ultimate amount of, of success while we have time on the earth. Like, that's literally what we all trying to do. But it's, it's harder to do that when you, when you feel like you got you to gotta hide things, when you feel like, you know, you can't feel certain ways in certain rooms around certain people because you're going to get certain judgment. Like we don't need that. That's not gonna help. So, you know, if you if you a nigga man, you got thoughts. You a man, you got thoughts, you got feelings, you got emotions, you got things you need to get off your chest or get off your mind, man. This is the place to do it. Um, so I will see y'all niggas on Tuesday. Uh we'll talk about it, we'll chop it up. And hopefully we can have some hopefully we have some real talk, man. Hopefully we can. So all right. I'm out.